proud were you of the of the team and the way they performed in that in that final game and also the reaction you got from the crowd? Um, firstly, the team. I mean, the team are doing exceptionally well, and not just the the 15, 23. I mean, you've shown I think 35 players over the last eight weeks. Um, it's been phenomenal. It really has the, the momentum that we've managed to carry into this semi-final. We've got to use that to our advantage. The crowd have been great. The crowd have grown and grown, not only just this season, but over the years that I've been at Glasgow. And uh, it was fantastic uh, on on Friday night. The noise that we had uh, and a great place to play. We put 10,000 in here uh, for this week's game, and it'll be it'll be brilliant. You've gone to semi-finals before, so how does it? How does it change in the week before a semi-final? I mean, I suspect you try and keep things the same and keep the routines going, but is there a kind of visible change in the way the players act and interact? Uh, well, the first thing is, is selection. So the first thing to, to get over or to get through, I suppose, is selection. And nobody knew that they were going to get selected. Every single place in this team, there was two or three guys going for it. Um, and we knew that. Um, but I've got to say, the guys who didn't get selected have been brilliant. The work they've done this week to really push us towards getting the win has been top class. Um, and then, yeah, you try and keep it the same. And one thing I hadn't really thought about much with the home semi-final, with the home semi-final, I was thinking about running out of Scots and I was thinking about the crowd. But the fact that the routine is exactly the same as any other home game. We're not going into a hotel the night before a game. We're, uh, we'll do our, our normal thing. We'll meet together probably about two hours out from the game. Uh, and I, I think that's a great thing that, that we were able to do that. That there's no change, there's no massive increase in pressure. It's just about us coming here and focusing on ourselves and, and performing. Okay, so there's a small matter of the game itself, and it's against Munster. Um, Munster, Leinster, they're big game teams. What do you expect from them, and what's marked them out throughout the season? Throughout the season, I think they've really settled in the way that they're trying to play. So, so last season, they put a lot more width in the game, um, coupled with the physicality that we know Munster always bring. Uh, but they've really settled into that and they showed that by reaching the Heineken Cup semi-final. They're a quality, quality team. Um, I'm, I'm pleased, I'm glad that we're bringing them over here. That might uh, put them out of their comfort zone slightly. Uh, there's been a couple of really tough, tough games against them this season. It's going to be a physical game. Up front, we know we've got to win the physical battle to allow our backs to do anything. There's a, a good start in the uh, sevens that were held here uh, two weeks ago. They were, the IRB punt out all these stats and you're able to look at them. One of the things that was really interesting was the turnover differential and the teams that were leading that were New Zealand, Fiji and I think South Africa or Australia but the top three teams in the rankings were the top three with the, the turnover differential so when you talk about a team like Munster that area of the game is going to be absolutely crucial between the two of you. Yeah, the, the breakdown will be huge. They, they defend a little bit differently than a lot of the teams in it. They will try and hold us up. They'll try and create malls and then get the turnover from there. Um, they, they're not so much a low tackling team like ourselves who will try and steal the ball on the ground. Uh, but we've looked at that. We know them very well. We know what we've got to try and do to, to stop them getting those turnovers. Um, but the turnovers come all over the park, not just in the breakdown. So our scrum needs to be good. Our line-out needs to function well. We need to take and receive restarts well. There's, there's loads of details. If we get the ball, we'll, we'll be a dangerous team. If we keep the ball, we'll be, we'll be a dangerous team. Um, but Munster will be thinking exactly the same. So when you're looking to, when you're going into contact and you're looking to recycle the ball, you're wary of or you're aware of what, what they will try and do with the choke tackle. So what do you have to do with your body in order to present that ball the way you want it? Well, first and foremost, as a, as a ball carrier, you have to run hard. If you get caught jogging into contact, that's when they'll, they'll hold you up. But a lot of it comes from the second and third guy into the breakdown. So it's about getting the ball going forward, uh, fighting to get to the deck, but first and foremost, getting it moving forward. Because as soon as it's static, the referee's going to call it and it's going to be a turnover. So get moving forward. If they commit two or three players and we can win it with two, then fantastic, we'll get the ball away. In terms of the strike runners that you've got for Glasgow, I mean, they've been performing well over the past few weeks. So how you talk about Munster's width, but you know Glasgow's got a good bit of width about it as well. So how important is it to get them the ball? Yeah, massively important. And a lot of that comes from set piece. It comes from the forwards doing the hard work to create space for some of these guys in the in the back line. Um, we've shown them we're a dangerous team. I wouldn't think there would be any team in the league that, that likes to defend against us. Um, but to do that, we have to control the ball. Uh, and as a front five, that's a key area for us. I've always said that I, the players' responsibility is to give the crowd something to shout about, not the other way around. 
But in saying that, I'm pretty sure that the home semi-final will be a, a fairly big motivating factor for all of the spectators, and it'll be noisy from the offset. I love it when we run out from a warm-up and you, you hear the atmosphere, you hear the build-up. That gives us a big lift as a set of players. If we can get, what, 9,500 class regions cheering this on tomorrow, then it'll be a, a huge day.